All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem. We're given a string. We want to write a function to check if it's a permutation of a palindrome. So just for some definitions here, a palindrome is a word or a phrase that is the same forwards and backwards. So a word that's a palindrome, as an example, is one that you're probably familiar with, race car. So you can read this word the same from the front or the back, and it's the same word. So race car is read the same from either front to the back. And then the second definition is permutation, and a permutation is just a rearrangement of the letters. So we want to figure out whether or not, given a string, if it's a permutation palindrome. So in other words, if we had this string here, let's just take the first uh, couple letters of the word race car, excluding the first R, and let's tag that first R onto the end. So I've really just permuted the letters of the string race car up here. I've just permuted them in such a way that I've moved the first R over to the end. So this, this thing here, is a palindrome permutation. And why is that? Well, it's because we can permute the letters of this particular string in such a way that we can arrive at a, at a palindrome. So we can arrive at a string that is read both from the front and the back in the same manner. So that is uh, an example of what we're after. So we want to write a function that's going to allow us to determine whether or not a given string is a palindrome permutation. So the last sentence of this description here says that the palindrome does not need to be limited to just dictionary words. So this particular example is maybe a better of that particular case. Consider this word, which is not anything in particular. It has the letters T-A-C-T -T space C-O-A. And if you think about it, this can be rearranged, it can be permuted in such a way that it forms the string taco cat. And indeed, this particular string is a palindrome. So it's possible to read this particular string the same front to back. So taco cat is read the same here and the same here. So we were able to permute these letters to arrive at this, which is a palindrome. Therefore, this is a palindrome permutation. However, if we consider the string down here, there's no way for us to permute the strings here in such a way that you can arrive at a uh, palindrome. So this is not an example of a palindrome permutation. So again, what we want to do is we want to figure out a way that we can write a function that will allow us to determine if a given string is a palindrome permutation. So the first step, as we do in many of these string processes, processing problems is we're going to pre-process the strings to eliminate things like case and spaces. So we can just focus on the letters that are present in the string. We're going to assume that the strings just consist of the alphabetic letters A through Z. So we want to lowercase everything to normalize it. We also want to get rid of any of the spaces. So that's going to be kind of the first pre-processing step for uh, before we move forward with the actual approach of the algorithm. So what is the approach here? Well, let's actually take the taco cat example and just write the letters out and see if we see any pattern. So we have a T A C O C A T. So if you look at this for a little while, you'll notice that there's duplicates of many of the letters. Namely, there's two T's, there's two A's, there's two C's, and then there's one O. So in other words, we have a T at the front, a T at the back, A at the front, A at the back, C at the front, and a C at the back, and then in this case, an O separating these two uh, TACs. So indeed this is a palindrome and in fact if I was to remove this O this would still be a palindrome but you can kind of notice and this is a general property that's going to apply to any other string with this property that if we go through this string that we're given and we realize that the number of occurrences of every given le letter is even namely the occurrences of T in this case there's two of them two A's two C's and there's only at most one occurrence of one other letter, so in this case O. If that's the case, then it's possible for us to arrange the letters in such a way that we arrive at a palindrome permutation. So these are going to be the properties that we're going to be after, and these are the properties that we're going to uh, try to check for a given input string. So how are we going to check those properties? Well, one way we can do that is we can do that by using a hash table. So we're going to loop through a string, and we're going to keep track of the occurrences of a given letter in the string. So for instance, let's assume that we start off here at the beginning of this loop for this particular string, taco cat. And what we want to do is we want to check if this letter is present in the dictionary. So we're starting off in the first character. And of course, since we're starting off here in the dictionary, we're going to initialize to be empty. So there's nothing in the dictionary. And we ask if is T present in the dictionary as a key. So, of course, it's not because, again, the dictionary is empty. So we go ahead and we put that in there and we give it a value of 1. So this is the first time, T indicates the first time we're seeing T. 
So we move along, we get to A. Again, we haven't seen an A before in this dictionary, so we go ahead and put that in there with a value of one. Same thing for C, same thing for O. So we do that for those characters, and then we arrive at C again. So this is the second C, so what we do is we consult our dictionary, and we ask, is C present in the dictionary? And this time, C is actually present in the dictionary. So we'll go ahead and increment the count of the value for the key C. So now the value for the key C is two, and all the other values for T, A, and O, those are all one. So we move on to the loop, we consult A, so we arrive at A, and we consult the dictionary, we ask, what is, is A present in the dictionary? It is, because the second character that we encountered was A, so it has a value of one. So we see another occurrence of A, so we increment that count by one, and so now we have a count, a value for the key A of two. Finally, we move on to T, same thing there, we've encountered T before, it has a value of one in the dictionary, so we increment that count by one, and that's gonna give us a value of two. So at the end of this, we're gonna have a dictionary that's going to have keys T-A-C-O, and T-A-C are going to have values corresponding to two, and then O is going to have a value corresponding to one. And what we can do is we can just check, we can go through the dictionary and keep track, okay, are all of the entries in this dictionary, do they all have an even value? except for at most one that can have a non-even value. And if that's the case, then it is indeed a palindrome permutation. Otherwise, if it's not, then we return false. So let's go ahead and code that up. So we're gonna call this is palindrome, and it's going to take an input string as input. And as I mentioned before, we need to pre-process the string to get rid of things like spaces and to normalize cases. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say input string, is equal to input string dot replace, and we're going to replace all of the occurrences of spaces with nothing, so that'll just smush all the strings together. And then we're going to say input string is equal to input string dot lower, and that's just going to normalize the case of the strings. So everything's going to be converted to lower case. Again, we're assuming that these strings consist of just alphabetic characters A through Z. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our hash table, which is what we were talking about before we were discussing the algorithm. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to loop through the elements of the string that we're given as input, and we're going to ask whether or not the character that we're on the loop is present in the dictionary. So we're gonna say for i in input string. We're going to ask, is i in the dictionary? Because if it is, then what we're gonna do is we're going to say increment the value of that key by one, so we're gonna go consult the key of whatever that character i is, and then consult the value of that, increment that value by one. Otherwise, this is the first time we're seeing it, what we're gonna do is we're going to say d of i is equal to one. So that's going to fill up the dictionary, and now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the contents, the values of the dictionary, abide by the rule that it, at most one of them is going to have an odd value, and the rest should have an even value. So what we can do here is we can keep track of how many times we've encountered an odd element in our loop through the dictionary. And we're going to say for key and value in d to items. So we're gonna loop, loop through the uh, keys and values in the dictionary. And we're going to say if the value mod two is not equal to zero and odd count is equal to zero. So what is this saying? This is saying that if the value that we encounter in this loop is odd and the odd count is equal to zero. So we, haven't, we have not encountered an odd element yet go ahead and increment the counter by one. So we can only do this once because again, if we encounter an odd element more than once, well, we're going to return false. So as long as odd count is equal to zero, this is okay, we've encountered an odd element, we'll go ahead and increment the count and we'll be good. Otherwise, so else if v dot mod two uh, is not equal to zero, so if this is odd or odd count is not equal to zero, so if this occurs, then what we're going to do is we're going to return false. So what is this saying? So this is saying that if, again, v is odd, or the odd count is not equal to zero, so actually I think I mean uh, and here, not or, so there's that. So basically if the element, the value is odd, and the odd count is not equal to one, namely we've incremented the odd count at this point, then what we're going to do is we're going to return false because we've encountered an odd element in the dictionary, a value with an odd element that um, is more than one. So that's going to tell us that this is not a valid permutation palindrome. So we're gonna return false if that is the case. And then otherwise, if we're able to get through this loop without any problems, namely if we're able to get through the loop without encountering this return statement here, we're going to go ahead and say return true.
So let's go ahead and run this on the two examples that we have on lines 25 and 24 up there. So we're going to say print is palindrome or is palinperm of the palinperm. So this is what we know to be a palindrome permutation. And then we're going to do the same thing on this other string, which we know that is not a valid permutation palindrome. So we're going to go ahead and do that on not here. So we're going to go ahead and write that. I'm going to clear the terminal. And then let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to go down here, say write. Oops. I'm going to write it. And then we're going to say Python uh, is palindrome permutation. And then what we're going to get here is we're going to get true and false. So that's what we expect for true for this one, because we know we can rearrange the letters in such a way to arrive at a palindrome. And then false for this one, because there's no way for us to rearrange the letters here to arrive at a palindrome. So this appears to give us what we want. So that's pretty much what we're going to uh, go with in this video. So just a brief analysis. So the time complexity here is going to be uh, linear, so it's going to be big O of n, where n is the length of the string. That's because we're going through sequentially here in this loop, and we're just checking uh, whether or not this element is present in the dictionary. So we obviously have to process every character in the input string for this case. And then we also have a space complexity, which is going to be O of n as well. So our space complexity is going to be linear as well. That's going to come from us filling up this dictionary. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything of the sort, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As always, the code will be hosted on my GitHub, and I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. If you found this helpful, please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, and if there's any other questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.